they're very political. Uh, how do you approach um, two different I, I just I, I kind of disagree with that. I think both of the bands at the Nucleus are straight up kick ass rock and roll bands. And so I think obviously Warrior Soul, uh, because it, it because Warrior Soul is a, is a medium where Quarry uh, has the opportunity to say certain things uh, that are very intrinsic and personal mm. to him. True. Yeah. A lot of people perceive this uh, Warrior Soul as just a political movement, but me, being a fan of, of Warrior Soul and being a fan of Dirty Rick, I see a lot of similarities in both of the yeah. bands. I mean, punk and belligerent, let's get high, let's get wasted. I mean, those are straight well as up rock did ass, it. rock, rock did it the stuff. other way. And yeah. vice versa, yeah, rock did it's got a political message. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, a lot of people say both of the bands are so different. I, I don't see that, really. I mean, I see two good, straight ahead, kick ass rock and roll bands with a great front man. End of story. I, I understand. <laughs> I can't say anything about that. No, no, no. Come on, man. <laughs> you just, can't top that one. No, I, I, I wouldn't be to try to talk, but to reinforce what he was saying is that they're they're not so totally uh, devoid of each other's influences. It's, it they are it, it there is a common ground, but certainly we have to admit that Dirty Rig is a far bigger party band yeah. vibe sure. and hard rock and sure. beer band than Warrior Soul, which is more of a serious yeah. uh, you know, and, and it has oh. more of a it, it can go into areas that Dirty Rig I don't want to put Dirty Rig in right, right. now Yeah. so uh, in that sense I think uh, it's true, there is a, a certain separation and there should be Fuck it, why does everything have to be the same? Yeah, from a band perspective though, I mean, just from yeah, a rock. musicality oh, perspective, yeah. both bands are both bands kick ass. straight ahead kick ass rock and roll bands with strong yeah. musicians, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's like, uh, I, since I invented emo, that's right. Uh, <laughs> I, I have to lay, lay that to rest at this that's point. Right. Thanks for inventing emo, by the no, way. No problem. Thank it was great. You. I hear it all the time. I feel really bad for all you rich white American kids um, that who are crying because are crying. daddy doesn't love you. Yeah. I, send, ooh, ooh, ooh. I send my sentiments to you. Get a fucking job. Yeah. Work. <laughs> Stop wearing fucking, fucking crappy clothes, you damn I like you fucking ugly bitch. Shut up, stop your crying and get a job. Put your out of tune. Get off Prozac and, and fucking go to work, you fucking fat bastard. <laughs> but we love emo. We love emo. We love emo. <laughs> we love emo. <laughs> We like that over here yeah, in the UK. Rich, You'll be proud to know. Oh, <laughs> you and Daddy are rich. Where? Oh, too much money. Where? Where? <laughs> oh, it's awful. Dad is so rich. <laughs> Daddy never helped me. Daddy never helped me. Oh, where? 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 <laughs> All right, enough emo about it. Wicked. Um. I'm 70 years old and I'm studying media now at college and I used to do uh, a rock and heavy metal show um, at the college radio, I promote radio on the internet and stuff like that. And also I'm doing this. So uh, what were you doing when you was my age? Can you, if you can remember. <laughs> can I have individual answers? How old are you? 17. I don't know if I should say what I was doing when I was your age. <laughs> I can actually it. say, if, if you would go to like 20 or 19, you might get into real trouble with me, but... You know what, to be honest, honest all right, then, all right, then, from like... What was I doing when I was 17? I was, to be honest, I was locking myself in a room, practicing guitar, working hard, studying, yeah. studying Randy Rhodes and Vivian Campbell and Les Paul and Chet Atkins and Roy mm -hmm. Clark, Creedence Clearwater Revival, Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Aerosmith, Van Halen, Judas Priest. Iron Maiden, that's what Jesus I was doing. Christ. That's what I was doing over and over and over and over and over and over again. The Rolling Stones and on and on. And that's, playing in bands. That's band. what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Playing in bands and working band. my tail off uh, to, learn my, to learn my craft and learn how to tune my guitar like all the emo guitar players out there. <laughs> Thank you, yeah, emo guys. Yeah, no, no, it's good. They're, they're pretty good players. They are. I am. Uh, I was I was doing a similar thing. I was playing fusion, playing jazz, playing. Uh, I'm gonna get another beer. I'll be right back. Gordon All that stuff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Thanks. I have to make a phone call. Uh, no, man. I was uh, I was studying uh, all that. Sh 
not the stuff he was doing because he's a little bit younger than me but mm -hmm. uh, you know definitely Hendrix definitely my vision orchestra definitely sex pistols definitely uh, like as diverse as Charlotte Pony uh, to Howard DeVoto or like you know any of that shit Ramones or whatever Iggy all the Detroit shit all that shit combined at 17 yeah. to be a time to really learn and that's when you really enjoyed rehearsing you know yeah. and learning how to play and it's when you really started to get chops and uh you know, girls were very important at that point. Mm -hmm. And uh, I chased them, and they chased me. It was a lot of fun. Had a good time. <laughs> a real good time. Very good. <laughs> uh, do you think uh, audience uh, differ from the US to the UK and Europe? And if so, how? Well, the bands in the UK are far better. <laughs> so, <laughs> I guess, uh, you guys have a great pool of talent. So does Sweden. Uh, Germany as well to a certain extent. And the U.S. obviously has some great musicians, but uh, I'm a little tainted because I really don't favor the U.S. Uh, situation as it exists right yeah. now. And um, I don't know. Uh, there's definitely a difference, and I think differences are really important. Mm -hmm. And I think that being individualistic and be trying to be unique and as individualistic as possible is probably the best thing for you as an artist. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, for a bit of fun, American beer or European beer? <laughs> Budweiser, dude, all the way, man. <laughs> is that your answer? Final? Are you yeah. sure? What are you drinking now? Boddington's. The cream of Manchester. Uh, so, is there any links or MySpace that the people at home can check out? Yeah, of course. Uh, you can check out where you sold MySpace and dot coms and dot nets and dot infos and mm -hmm. whatever, all the all the bips and bobs and doodads and mm -hmm. whatever. And same with Dirty Rick. I, uh, I really don't have time to maintain anything mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So, there are other people that are very interested in doing that, so they do, and I talk to them, you know, briefly <laughs> it was like uh, once or twice a week but um, you can definitely getting in touch is not you can't really get in touch with me <laughs> but uh, you can always see messages and I do actually get messages mm -hmm. sent to me if I respond to you you, know, you probably had some good question yeah you know but you know I do I answer questions probably ten times a year yeah that's it okay but, yeah I, I'm busy writing <laughs> cool. Uh, so if you want to check out more on this, I've got links on MySpace, angelometal.com. So I'd like to thank you, Corey, for taking the time out to this thank little you. interview. And uh, Charles muffed off, but yeah. Peace. Let's get him out of there. Peace. So Angela Metal, Corey from Dirty Rig. Keep it loud. Yeah.